Welcome to the gorgeous and tranquil village of Sands End, set back just a few yards from the spectacular Yorkshire coast, and located just a stone's throw away from the historic town of Whitby. With picture postcard surroundings and a calm atmosphere, Sands End here is a quiet haven that's today a popular retreat for holidaymakers, particularly in this area of the village, the heart of Sands End where you'll find rows of cottages that overlook the trickling Sands End Beck. This small stream around which the village is built originates high up on the North York Moors, before flowing down the hills, past us here, and out into the North Sea. And later on in our walk, we'll take a closer look at the Beck, and the point where it empties out onto Sands End's immense beach. But before we make our way out to the coast, Let's take a stroll through the wonderfully calm lanes of Sands End. Now this may only be a small village, but it's a place with a rather diverse character, with a range of different landscapes to explore, from the wide open seaside to this area, known as the Valley. Occupying the western edge of Sands End village, the valley is perched around Sands End Beck, and dotted with idyllic cottages set among achingly pretty scenery making it the perfect place to come for a quiet break from the busy seafront. And given its beauty and proximity to the beach, the valley here is dominated by holiday homes, which account for the vast majority of the local population in Sands End today. But as we walk deeper into the valley past a number of the village's many holiday homes, where exactly would you find idyllic Sands End on a map? Well, as we mentioned, Sands End is located just a short distance from Whitby, lying about three miles up the coast from the famous harbour town and at the end of an expansive sandy beach. In fact, you can walk all the way from here to Whitby along one largely uninterrupted expanse of sand, and that's where Sands End gets its name from, with the village lying at one end of the beach stretching from Whitby. But while that name for the village is fairly easy to understand, Sands End has been known by a variety of different names through history, and we'll talk more about that in a short while. Here though, we're already approaching the deepest part of the valley, a small but riveting area in the village. Around us, the steep sides of the valley descend from the great cliffs of the Yorkshire and Cleveland coast, becoming ever narrower as they reach further inland. Now while the valley created by the beck flowing down from the moors does continue to narrow, this is about as far inland as the inhabited part of Sands End goes, marked by a few more houses dotted on the cliffs, and this small church. This is St Mary's Church, a small Victorian church that was built in 1869 to cater to an influx of people to Sands End. But at first, these people weren't the tourists that flock here today. Before gaining popularity with tourists, Sands End began to emerge as a place of industry, specifically in the extraction of the mineral known as alum, historically plentiful under the cliffs on this part of the Yorkshire coast, and having provided work for many people in villages around this region. In Sands End, many new cottages were built for the arriving alum workers, along with St Mary's Church, which gave villagers a place of worship right on their doorstep, which at the time was a real luxury. Prior to the building of St Mary's here in the valley, the nearest church was located a mile's walk up the cliffs in the village of Lythe, meaning that people had to walk all the way there and back for worship. The church in Lythe was the 13th century built St Oswald's, which is also notably the home of a number of Viking era artefacts. And Sands End too has an interesting link with the Vikings, and it all relates to the small stream that's flowing beneath our feet here. Sands End Beck, which runs through the heart of the valley, is thought to have given Sands End its name during the Viking era. Now it's almost certain that this area was settled by Vikings around 1000 years ago, and what we now know as Sands End was then called Thordisa, the name deriving from the Old Norse referring to a small stream belonging to a woman named Thordis. At the time, the Vikings used what is today Sands End Beach as their own marketplace, trading with nearby villages. But long after the Vikings occupied this area, the valley here came under the ownership of an estate, the Mulgrave Estate, which has owned this land and many of its cottages since 1743. 
The estate rents out most of the cottages in the valley here as holiday homes. And although it may seem quiet around us, there's always high demand for holiday homes here at the height of summer. As such, Sandsend has now found itself as one of the most expensive places to live or rent a house anywhere on the Yorkshire coast. Although given the area's beauty, it's no surprise that Sandsend is such a coveted village. But of course, while the valley is a beautifully idyllic place to stay in a quaint holiday home, Sandsend is still a wonderful village to visit even on a day trip, mostly because of its spectacular beach, one of the best in Yorkshire. From here, we'll make our way back over Sandsend Beck and out towards the huge beach, before we then head along the main coastal road towards the eastern edge of Sandsend. Because along with the tranquil valley here, Sandsend consists of another small Beckside settlement, which was once entirely separate. Known as East Row, it lies parallel to the valley just a few minutes walk down the coast, but it was joined to the village of Sandsend in the 19th century the period during which industry led to unprecedented growth in the area. The emergence of the alum industry led to a relatively large influx of people to this area, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, was once a very isolated part of the country, hidden deep beneath the cliffs and moors. But after alum was first discovered in the local landscape in the 17th century, places like Sands End soon became rather valuable in the eyes of industrialists. The mineral was used extensively in Britain's thriving textiles industry, and it was Whitby that formed the core of the alum business for years, with boats transporting alum all over the country for use in textiles production. Meanwhile, a railway line was later built to connect the booming industrial town of Middlesbrough, further up the coast from here, towards Whitby. This was the Whitby, Redcar and Middlesbrough Railway, which as well as its major industrial termini, included stops at smaller alum sites like Sands End, with the village's station built on the cliffs behind us in 1883. Of course, during the golden age of Britain's railways, even the smallest villages in the country were accessible by train, and the presence of the railway and the station just up above the valley proved an important development in the rise of Sands End during the 19th century. The old station was once the gateway to the village, and it lay on a spectacular part of the railway line, as we can see from this old photo, which shows us an amazing railway viaduct that once spanned the mouth of Sands End Beck here. The viaduct was later demolished in the 1960s, leaving the wide open sea view we have today, but the old station was always an important part of local village life. From the platforms up on the cliffs, both alum workers and later thousands of tourists descended to arrive in gorgeous Sands End here, and did so until the station was closed in 1958, though its last remaining feature is used as a private house today. But even with the loss of the railway link, Sands End remains a firm favourite for holidaymakers. Now having made our way out of the valley, we can begin to see the wide beach and big blue sea stretching out in front of us towards the horizon. But before we head out onto the sands, we need to walk over Sands End Beck, which is crossed at this end by a small road bridge. The bridge has long been a point of note, but before it was built, it was this point of the village that gave it another of its old names. Long after the Viking era Thordisa, this village was known by the name Sandyford, after the ford of the Beck flowing out into the North Sea here which, as we can see by looking out onto the beach, was fairly described by people of the day as being rather sandy. It's not exactly certain when Sandyford became Sands End, but of course, the new name too makes sense when the surrounding landscape is taken into account. The wide beach that begins in Whitby and extends for three miles along the coast comes to an abrupt stop just after Sands End Beck, marking the end of the sands and the beginning of miles and miles of huge seaside cliffs that run all the way towards the town of Saltburn-by-the-Sea, nearer to Middlesbrough. Looking in the other direction meanwhile, the beach that extends all the way towards Whitby sits beneath a row of much more gentle cliffs, set back a little further from the coast. But now that we're out of the valley, we can see a completely different side to the village of Sands End, 
with grand buildings overlooking the sea on this coastal road. With spectacular sea views, many of these buildings were built as Sanzen became a popular place with tourists. The Beach Hotel, for instance, is a well-established family-run hotel that has been welcoming visitors to Sanzen for decades, and it's neighboured by a row of buildings that may feature a range of different architectural styles, but which were all actually built in roughly the same era, that being the turn of the 20th century. The birth of tourism here around that time cemented the emergence of Sanzend after its early rise on the back of the alum industry, and the many homes and hotels that came to accommodate tourists were built on this coastal road in between the historic valley and East Row, the new buildings linking the two separate settlements into one larger village. As we mentioned, the merger was initially driven by the influx of alum workers to the area and the new houses built for them, but along with homes constructed for new labourers, new facilities were built in Sanzen too, such as the old Paimon Institute here in front of us, which was built around 1900. The institute, a local community centre, is named after George Paimon, who was perhaps the most famous resident in Sanzen's history. Born here in 1822, Paimon lived on the seafront, and as a child he would take his family's fishing boat out to sea. That love for the sea continued as Paimon grew up, as he went on to serve as an apprentice on board ships that traded across the North Sea, invaluable experience for what ultimately became his main career. After moving up to Hartlepool as an adult, Paimon founded his own shipping company, mostly dealing in the transportation of coal across the sea, and with the boom of the coal trade in the 19th century, Paimon became a major shipping magnet, and by far the richest man to have come out of Sands End. At the end of his life, he gifted the village the Paimon Institute which we just passed, and it was built on the site of the old cottage where he lived. But as we continue along the seafront, we're now entering the part of Sands End that was once upon a time the separate village of East Row. Much like the valley, East Row is built around a small stream that flows out to sea, the mouth of which can be seen on the sands down below. Known as East Row Beck, it flows parallel to Sands End Beck from the moors atop the cliffs, and it's the last stream that cuts across this beach before the major river Esk, which runs through the centre of Whitby off in the distance. Now interestingly, while much of our focus on the two becks of Sands End is centred on their mouths by the sea, near their sources up on the top of the cliffs, you'll find the ruins of the medieval Mulgrave Castle. Built in the Norman era, the castle was the domain of the wealthy Mulgrave family, and that's a name that might ring a bell, as the Mulgrave estate, historically linked to the castle, owns much of the land and many of the houses in the valley. If you're staying for a few days in Sands End in one of the village's delightful cottages, a visit up to the ruins of the Mulgrave Castle makes for an interesting hike, with the land on which the ruins are located owned by the Mulgrave estate, but which are open for walking most months of the year, and so offer a change of scenery from the seaside. Back down by the sea, however, we now find ourselves in the heart of East Row, which, like the valley, is also hemmed in by the cliffs. By virtue of being on the main coastal road as it briefly winds inland across the beck, East Row is a little busier than the quiet lanes of the valley. And also, as it's a little closer to Whitby, you'll find a lot more larger visitor infrastructure here, including hotels, pubs, restaurants and more. At the height of the summer season in the middle of the day, East Row, with all its places to eat and drink, is often packed with people, who spend some time here before heading back out onto the beach. As such, the valley still holds the title of the more exclusive, tranquil part of Sanzen village today, one of the reasons that it's such an expensive place to stay nowadays. But of course, East Row is no less picturesque than the valley, as we can see from the delightful riverside scene at the mouth of the beck here, which flows out calmly to the beach and the sea, making for a nice little haven on this expansive coastline. But as we continue around that haven, this part of the coast has been busy with road traffic for many, many centuries. While the main road now follows the feet of the cliffs through here, Sands End was also once the site of the end of a 2,000-year-old road that made its way over the moors, 
running all the way from the city of Lincoln, about 100 miles south of here, before dropping down to the seaside. This huge road was the work of the Romans. But why on earth did they build a road all the way from the big city of Lincoln to Little Sands End here? The reason, as we cross over East Robeck, was industry, as the Romans used the sand here to manufacture cement and then transport it inland. Once upon a time, there were a number of Roman cement mills here, the first example of heavy industry in the area, and whose remains have been uncovered in recent years by excavations. Cement manufacturing on the beach here declined centuries ago, but Sands End is doing just fine now with its roaring tourist trade. Now having crossed East Robeck, here we're passing by what's believed to be one of the oldest buildings in Sands End, the 17th century Hart Cottage, which lends its name to the neighbouring pub, the Busy Hart Inn. The cottage is a rare example of the kind of homes that once lined this historic road, as it's now neighboured by far more modern houses that were built at the inception of Sands End's tourist trade. But as we've seen on our walk through this wonderful village, Sands End is a place with a lot of variety and a number of different faces. Here in busy East Row, for example, we're worlds away from the almost entirely rural lanes of the valley where we began our walk. However, one thing that's shared by all of Sands End is its spectacular seaside landscape, with groups of houses hidden on the grand cliffs as well as those down by the sea and beside the becks. But as the sun sets over Sands End on this summer's evening, there's one major thing about this village that we still haven't taken a close look at. The beach. So as we look over the beach, let's now take a walk out onto the sands that have long played such an important part in the history of Sands End. Walking away from the centre of East Row, Sands End Beach is by far one of the largest beaches on this part of the coast, which, as we've mentioned, stretches all the way to Whitby, allowing you to walk along the sands from here to the historic town past some spectacular natural scenery. But as you can see, the gorgeous sand of the beach here also makes it a great place to relax and take in the sun and the sea. Dotted with small fishing boats and more, Sands End Beach is an always bustling part of what is undoubtedly one of Yorkshire's prettiest coastal villages, famed as one of the most idyllic spots in the county. But it's been a long road for Sands End to become the village that it is today having once existed as the home of a small Roman industry, and later the site of Viking settlement. But as we approach the waves crashing against the shore, this sandy beach has always been a key part of life in this village, serving as the industrial resource for the Roman cement, to the Vikings marketplace, and today the centrepiece of the local tourist trade. So that makes it the perfect place to bring an end to our walk around Sands End. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to taking a trip to gorgeous Sands End for yourself in future too.